This example that we saw last time, although the program seems very simple, there is a race condition that exists, right? We saw that last time. So the race condition happened because of the order in which thread 1 and thread 3 got executed, right? So before thread 3 could print, thread 1 came and updated the thread ID variable and therefore what thread 3 saw was also the value 1, which is not what it had actually fetched. How do we fix this? So we are going to look at a lot of race conditions. Race conditions is something that you have to become familiar with. You have to realize how race conditions happen, right? The more examples you see, the more aware you'll become and you know, you'll be better equipped to fix it. And we'll see how to fix these conditions. But we'll walk through some example codes and see these race conditions as they happen, okay? Right, so how do we fix this? So there's a simple mechanism that OpenMP provides. What you do is you declare your variable to either be private or shared. Okay, what does it mean for a variable to be private? It means that every thread is going to have its own copy of that variable. In this particular case, PID is declared outside, but its behavior would be the same as if PID was declared inside this region. It's like a private copy. So whatever I write into TID within this parallel region is only visible to me, to the same thread. Right? And if any other thread writes to its TID, it's only visible to it. I don't get to see that. Right? Threads don't get to see each other's variables. All right. And what does shared mean? Shared means that the variable is global. It's shared by all the threads. So all the threads get to see the same memory location. In the case of private, the memory location is different for each thread where that variable is stored. In case of shared, it is the same memory location that they are accessing. Any questions? Right, then it comes down to what is the default behavior? For any variable for which you don't specify the scope, what is the default behavior, right? So in OpenMP, we'll come to that, the default behavior is shared. If you're using a variable which is declared outside, but used inside a parallel region, and you have not specified the scope in the parallel region, then it is treated as shared, okay? This is OpenMP specification, so every compiler has to adhere to this. Okay, so now when I print, right, so I get this output. So this is the output that I wanted to get, right? It's the correct output. Why? Because if you recall in the last example, the problem was happening because TID ended up being shared, right? That's not something I wanted. Every thread should have its own copy of what is my thread number, what is my thread ID. Yeah, I run it again, I again see the correct output. But how do we know for sure that we have fixed the bug? I mean, when a race condition exists, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. So you should try to figure out how the race condition is happening and then you can test out whether that race condition is for real or not, right? So let's go back to the code where numty and tid were shared, right? So this is the buggy code. So how can I make this code fail every time? Why does this code fail? After I've fetched the thread ID and before I have printed the value of TID, some other thread gets scheduled. How can I make this program fail every time by introducing something, some statements or some... We can make a remarkable distance between the sequence and assigning the TID value and printing. Correct. Right? So here's a simple way of making this program fail. Right? So what do I do? I introduce a long wait. There are various ways of introducing waits. I've just picked one very simple way. I've introduced a loop for j equal to 0, j less than 10 million, right? This is enough for the thread to get scheduled out. Or if you're executing this on a multiprocessor, this processor is waiting for a long period of time and during that time, other processors will execute their instructions, right? Remember the word that I used, right? Almost. You can never ensure that your program will always fail, okay? For whatever reason, all the threads may end up getting stuck somewhere and not getting executed and they might end up executing in the correct order that does not cause this particular race condition to happen, right? How do these threads get executed in the presence of this wait? What is most likely to happen? Let's just take the simple case of two threads, right? We have four threads, but let me just explain this using two threads. So what will happen is, so there is a thread 0 and there is a thread 1, right? 
let's say thread 0 comes first, it will invoke numt equal to openmp get num threads, it will get the number of threads, it will execute tid equal to omp get thread num and what will happen when it executes this instruction? It's going to store 0 in tid, right? It will get the value 0. This is thread id 0. And now, I have introduced a long wait, right? So it's probably going to spend a long time over here. And in the meanwhile, while it's waiting over here, this thread is going to come, it's going to initialize numt and then it will set tid equal to 1, right? Because of this long wait, right? Because thread 0 has not gone ahead and printed the value. And now thread 1 will continue execution and it will also get into a long wait. At some point of time, both of them will come out of their long waits, right? And what will happen at this point in time? So both of them will try to print and what will both of them end up printing? Whichever TID was written last, right? In this case, in this small example, it's TID equal to 1. So both of them will end up printing 1. But you get the idea, right? What has this long wait done? It has ensured that all the threads have executed instructions up to this point, right? And therefore, all the instructions after this will get executed by the threads after all the threads have executed all the instructions before this wait, because all the threads are going to come and wait over here. So this wait, right, there are different ways that you can invoke this wait and you have to be careful while invoking this wait. A lot of times you will find that the code actually does not get into a long wait because compilers are smart enough, they will figure out that whatever is being updated over here, variable j is not getting used and they might throw away this code, right? So if you are using some compiler options, like there are various compiler options, O1, O2, O3, you can use advanced compiler options. The more advanced compiler options you use, the smarter the compiler tries to act, right? It will try to remove redundant code and so on then you won't see this happening. So if you're trying to check your code via this mechanism, make sure you're not compiling with O3. Don't compile with any advanced compiler options. So now if we execute this code with four threads, this is the output I see. So in this case, what has happened? Thread three filled up TID last, right? And then I run again, maybe some other thread fills up TID last. Right? So the output is going to depend on whichever thread filled up TID last, right? But what is important is that you know, if you have a hunch that this is where the problem is in my code, you are able to reproduce that problem. Right? So sometimes it's useful to know that. Okay, so now when I think I have fixed the code, I again let that wait statement stay and I can again check whether I've fixed the bug or not, right? And again, I see the correct output. I again see the correct output when I run this, right? So this is with the fixed code. I had declared private TID, right? Again, this does not guarantee that your code is correct, but I mean, when you're debugging, right, this is a useful tool, introducing baits to try to catch race conditions is something very useful. Let's try to do something else now. Let's try to optimize this code a little bit. So what's happening is that numt is the same for all the threads, right? Number of threads is the same, right? No matter whether I'm calling from thread one, two, three, or zero. I mean, I'm making four calls to OMP get num threads. Seems like a waste. So can I optimize on that? I don't want to make four calls. Why should I make four calls? So maybe what I can do is that I can initialize numt outside, right? Why do I need to do it from every thread? So this is the code for that. So what have I done? I've just commented out that numt equal to OMP get num threads inside the parallel region and I've put it outside. Any problems? So now when I execute this code, this is what I get. So remember, OpenMP follows a folk join model. So what happens is that till this point where it encounters the hash pragma OMP parallel region, there's a single thread that is getting executed, the master thread, right? And when it encounters this region, between where this region starts and where this region ends, what it's going to do is it's going to fork in this case, three additional threads, right? And the master thread is going to continue executing one of the threads. And eventually when this region ends at that point of time, it's going to wait for all the threads to come and join. And then again, I'll have a single thread that executes from there on, right? 
So now what is the problem? I tried to get the value of OMP get num threads at this point in time. What is the number of threads at that point in time? Only one. So that's why the value that you got was one, right? So how do we fix this? We want to initialize the number of threads only once. Here's another way of trying to achieve that. Maybe I can just invoke it from one thread, right? Maybe one thread can make a call to OMP get num threads. Why do I need to have all the threads making the call? So I insert this code. So first I make a call to OMP get thread num from each thread. I fetch the value into TID. And now the thread which has TID equal to zero, I ask it to initialize OMP get num threads. Right? So only one thread will make a call to OMP get num threads. And then everybody prints hello world from thread percent D of percent D. Right? So now when I try to run this, seems to run fine. I run it again. I get some garbage. So why did this happen? In this particular case, thread number one and thread number two, they basically went past this instruction and printed hello world even before thread zero could come and execute this code. Right? How do I make this fail every time? Long wait, where? Where do I put the long wait? So I can put a long wait inside this if condition. What will happen because of this? Thread zero will go into a wait state and not come out of this for a long time. It will not call OMP get num threads for a long time because it's waiting. And in the meanwhile, the other threads are going to go ahead and print hello world, right? So if I run this code now, I'll most probably see an output like this, right? Okay, here's another way to do this. What do I want? I want that the threads should not go and execute the print statement until thread zero has initialized numpty, right? In other words, I want these instructions to be executed before any thread executes this instruction, right? Is that clear? If, if I can ensure that, then the output will be correct. So how do I do that? Here is one way of doing it. So I have two different parallel regions. In the first region, what do I do? For TID zero, it makes a call to OMP get num threads. And in the second region, all of them do the printing. Why will this give the correct output? because OpenMP follows a fork join model, remember? So what is gonna happen? This particular point over here where this parallel region is ending turns out to be a point of synchronization, right? So I'll have a single thread executing till this point. In this parallel region, again, three threads are going to get spawned. And then at this point, I'm going to wait for all the threads to complete. And then this single thread is going to carry on only after all the other threads have joined. And then for this parallel region, again, it's going to spawn four threads, right? And so on. You should have a private TID. Well, here I don't need private because it is declared inside the parallel region. Look, I only need to say whether a variable is shared or private if it has been declared outside. So I need to tell you that, you know, I want this to be private. Otherwise, OpenMP will treat it as shared, right? But if I'm declaring it inside, it's obvious that it has to be private. Okay? Uh, if a variable is declared outside and it's private, what is the value of the degree after the exam? You should not assume anything about that, right? So you should be careful to write your programs in a way that you're not dependent on that. Right, so what happens when I run this program? So this is what I get, right? 
and I run it again seems fine to me. I have a weight here, so I'm reasonably confident that you know I don't have a race condition. There could be some other race condition, but this program does not have any race condition. Why is the solution not elegant? There are overheads in launching threads, doing forks and joins is expensive, right? I'm unnecessarily doing that. What else? I'm also making calls to MP get thread num again, right? Which is unnecessary. What, what was I trying to do? I was trying to save a call to OMP get num threads and instead I'm calling OMP get thread num twice now from every thread, right? Seems like a waste. So definitely not an elegant solution. It works, it serves the purpose, it, it does what I wanted it to do, but it's not really a great piece of code. But the whole purpose of doing all this is to expose you to some of these concepts, right? That's why we are writing this kind of code.